Welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. The Girl in the Woods Episode 3 Chapter 21-30 Both of them were staring at me like they saw a ghost. I couldn't realize to smile with them or not. I don't know why, but I felt really embarrassed. He asked me to be strong and I did it, so if he witnessed that, why I should feel ashamed, instead I should be overjoyed right? Human minds are really complicated, no one can decipher why we feel, what we feel at some times. I just looked down and went to my seat. They didn't say anything but Luke's huge grin was so difficult to unnoticed. However, we began our journey around 7.45. Miss Smith and Dr. Frederick were with us on our bus. But no one really bothered about them, all of them were screaming and singing, especially Shane and the buddies. I was dying to look back and see where Luke sat, but I was so afraid. I didn't want any more trouble with those. I felt a vibration in my bag. I took out my phone to see, the new message. You look beautiful heavy black heart I couldn't help smiling. I am just wearing my normal clothes and my hair is also the same. I have no makeup applied as usual. So can't really think of a reason for that P is that so, but you indeed look beautiful today. I think this new found bravery suits you so he actually saw it, and he found it beautiful. Someone asked me to be brave no so I just followed his advice that someone must love you so much, to give such a piece of good advice, I guess so d. Why just guessing, aren't you sure about that? Well, I think I have no doubts about that, playing with words girl. However, I can't just express my happiness for you I can feel it, you know from your words, I am so looking forward to these three days princess. I sense like something big will happen, what? Is he going to tell me his identity? Oh. My God. Is that what is going to happen? No no. I will die from happiness. I was smiling like crazy, but I could even stop it. I was thinking about him, trying to recall past memories. Even though I didn't realize, we actually have a considerable amount of memories since high school. He was always in the shadow, the shadow of Jake. I didn't even realize his existence those days because I was so preoccupied with Jake. Sarah, I got panicked as someone shook my shoulder while yelling at me. What? I asked automatically from Nellie who was shaking me. We were calling you didn't you hear, she asked annoyingly. Oh, no. I was, never mind, what is the matter? I asked. Oh they might have called me, I didn't hear a thing, I was so attached to my thoughts. We want you to sing a song for us, she said giggling. What me, song? Okay, what is going to happen right now? From where this stupid suggestion came in the first place? Oh. Sweetheart. Please don't say no, you are one hell of a singer and a guitarist too. Remember that time during high school you sang and played the guitar for us? Oh. I still cherish that. Guys believe me she is a perfect singer. Sarah, please give us a chance to hear you, it was Bob. That time at high school, no. God. That was a nightmare. It happened at a summer camp. I happened to do a performance at the last moment. I was literally forced to do that. I agreed to sing, but they gave me a guitar too. And I successfully failed at both. I was somewhat good at singing, though I didn't know much about playing guitar, but with the nervous, I made a real mess and got humiliated in front of everyone. It is one of the incidents in my life that I want never to evoke, but thanks to Bob I remember it as it happened just now. So. He is going to take revenge, isn't he? 
He has chosen a brilliant option. No. Bob. I can't sing, I tried to refuse. No, you can't refuse, please, you must let others hear you, see we even got a guitar, Bob said in a desirous voice while showing me a guitar. Oh God. This is really I can't go through this. Sarah, sing a song girl, don't be shy, Bob was telling me, how good you were at singing, we didn't even know you are such a good singer, Miss Smith said smiling at me. Oh. Well played. Bob. You have trapped me in a way that I can never escape. I couldn't even believe he even approached, Miss Smith because he is normally very famous on avoiding talk with lecturers as much as possible. No doubts, he is coming for revenge. No Miss Smith. I don't really, sing, and. I don't feel, well also, I stammered. Come and Sarah. Don't be afraid, it just your friends, nothing to be worried. Didn't you hear they were singing all the way? No one is judging you, Miss Smith said again. Oh ma'am you know nothing, these people are not my friends in any mean, they are hate me, and all they want is to make me humiliated. My eyes travelled to Luke, without me even knowing. He was sitting in a seat in the back, Mark was sitting beside him. He was staring at me, and the familiar painful look was filled in his face. Sarah sing for us. Someone screamed, and it was followed by many others. The whole bus was filled with cheers in no time Sarah. 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 I think this newfound bravery suits you his words were echoing in my mind, despite all the noise. I have to keep him proud, I can't let him down. Fine. I screamed. I think I have never screamed like that. My head felt spinning. But, it was good, everyone stopped their noises. I will play, I said, looking at Luke. He looked troubled. He was not there in that summer camp, but he may have heard about what happened. So I can't blame him for worrying about me. Terrific. Bob, grabbed me from my hand and took me to the back. He made me sit beside Jake. He was sitting in the front seat of Luke's. I felt my heart started to pump furiously. What? Now I have two things to concern. Oh, I hate sitting near him, it makes me nervous to death. Bob gave me the guitar. I took it and closed my eyes. The fragrance of Jake's cologne was seducing my nostrils. I even felt the warmth of his body. I heard his deep sighs. Forget everything else, Sarah, forget Luke. Forget Jake. Focus. You got this. Last time, you messed everything up because you got nervous. This time you have to stay calm. They want for you to get humiliated. Don't let them get it. I tightly closed my eyes, my mind went blank. I see nothing but darkness. I took a deep breath. I traveled my fingers gently on guitar strings, and I started singing, my favorite song, the song I remember every word, the song I always played and sing whenever I want to drown in my thoughts of him. Heart beats fast colors and promises how to be b.rave. How can I love when I'm afraid to fall? But watching you stand alone all of my doubt suddenly goes away somehow one step closer. Heavy black heart heavy black heart heavy black heart heavy black heart I was singing closing my eyes and my fingers running vigorously over the guitar. There were just the sound of the bus and my voice blended with the guitar tune, nothing more. Has everyone forgotten to breathe? Am I breathing? I have died every day waiting for you. Darling, don't be afraid I have loved you for a thousand years I'll love you for a thousand more my eyes were filled with tears. I don't know the reason but all the memories of my obsession with Jake were coming to my mind, and they carried me away to a whole new world, where it was him and me, looking into the eyes of each other. 
I have loved you for a thousand years I'll love you for a thousand more. I finished singing and slowly opened my eyes, those tears held in my closed eyes started running along my cheeks. Everyone was just staring like they were just frozen with a spell. What do you think? What have I done? Oh. Wait. Did I tell you, after that horrible incident, I went to music practices at school. I learned to play guitar and I trained my voice as well. I did it just to make me happy, but I didn't make any use of it, well until now. So don't afraid. I nailed it. Your girl nailed it, guys. I felt someone keep a hand on my shoulder, I turned around to see Jake was staring at my tear-filled eyes, his eyes looked, well I don't know, so many emotions, that I can't distinguish from each other, his hand felt so warm on my shoulder, even though the thick material of my baggy sweater. His face lit up. God. It is that smile. It is that smile. Which I saw in my dream. The only difference is this time, it was not a dream, it was real, and it's really happening. Oh my god. Chapter 22, I just stared at his startling blue eyes, which were joyfully smiling at me. His whole face glowed with that rare smile, the exact same smile I saw in my dreams. Time seemed to be frozen. I felt nothing but, his touch and his smile. He nodded his head slightly with appreciation. Then everything began to move again. Wow! Wonderful most people started to shout. Someone grabbed my hand and shook it. I looked at that person. God! That was Luke. You nailed it, he shook my hand and whispered with a huge smile on his face. I felt like dreaming. Yeah, nothing but dreaming. How is it even possible? Both of them appreciate me like that. I mean I can understand Luke's reaction. He is my sweet joyful Luke. But Jake? He smiled with me, not just that he touched me. I have never seen him offer that rare smile to any girl before, oh God. My poor heart is going to explode with happiness, everyone was praising me, and they were asking for more. Fantastic. Sarah. You have a lovely voice and you are truly talented Miss Smith said smiling. I blushed, this is like the very first time I got recognized by my batchmates for anything. I couldn't even believe what was just happening. Bob was staring at me, he looked like a teenage boy who just got brutally rejected by his crush. Poor Bob, he tried to make me humiliated but it turned out to be something he never expected. Bob what you said was right. She has extraordinary talent Dr. Frederick complimented. Bob smiled at him, but his face was distorted with disappointment. Sing another one please, most of them were requesting. Yish please Sarah, with that I turned around to see the owner of that voice. I saw Luke was smiling at me. He was overjoyed. My sweet innocent Luke. You always witnessed how I got bullied by others, and today for the first time you observe I get praised by everyone. I know it made you happy way more than me. I couldn't deny his request. I was still sitting next to Jake. But I didn't feel uncomfortable anymore. Instead, I felt confident, because both of them were there for me. I sang two other songs. We reached Willows around eleven. I was stunned by the beauty of that place. It was generously gifted from Mother Nature. We were assigned to our rooms. I had to share my room with Penny, and I was happy about that. Not because I like her or anything, as I have said I had no friends at university, and no one showed any sympathy for me. But this girl was less bh compared to most of the others. She has a boyfriend from our batch so she is so engaged in her affair and didn't pay any attention to me. Anyway, she didn't talk to me much. On the other hand, I also didn't want to talk to her, 
I was so attached in my own thoughts. Especially with the unexpected behavior of Jake. I know I should not think this way, but I couldn't help it. Remembering about that specific moment even though it was just for a few seconds, it made me blush and my heart to change its rhythm. I wish Jake didn't do such a thing. Why he can't just stay as his cold mystical self? Why? What's with this new attitude all of the sudden? Let me move on. Jake. There is someone who loves me for real, please let me go, don't make me fall for you over and over again. I want to be loyal to the person who loves me and cares about me. After taking lunch we stared our first session, which was an introduction around 2 p.m. Ms. Smith explained in detail about the purpose of the workshop and agenda. Then Dr. Frederick came with the team list. The team we have to work with for the whole three days. He informed us there will be six members in one team. I was praying from all my heart to assign me to a team with less annoying members. Please God. Don't put Shane or any of his friends to my team, please. Dr. Frederick has announced many teams by now and still, my name was not called. I was waiting tensely, what if Luke assigned to my team, oh. Then it will be a dream come true. Sarah Anderson with Mr. Frederick's voice I got disconnected from my thoughts. Dean Roberts okay, he is a less annoying guy. That's good. Glenn Rosso. Great. I am going to suffer. Bob Daniels what? What? Why life is this cruel? Luke Bernard wait, did I hear that well? Jacob McMiller. Am I dreaming, if I am this is a sweet dream blended with a nightmare. What we really call that type of a dream. I got to spend my three days with both of them and those two idiots and one neutral guy. I can't even imagine how these three days will be. Unfair, they have three top rankers, I heard someone complaining. Yeah, that's true. I, Jake and Luke all three of us are top rankers, so we have a high probability of performing well, despite the presence of Bob and Glenn who barely pass any exam. Wait. It's highly suspicious for our lectures to let all three of us be in one team. Why I feel there is something more hidden under the surface. I will find a way to stick to you for all the three days. Luke's words came to my mind as I walked towards them to sit together. He had a huge grin on his face. Does he actually have to do something related to this team selection? Has he done something? It is not impossible either. I sat on the vacant chair which was right in the middle of Jake's and Luke's chairs. I have never been this happy about any team you know, Glenn said laughing like an idiot. Same here, we can just chill bro, Bob agreed and they high-fived. Stupid. I pouted. Jake showed no emotions at all. He was just playing with a pen, moving it from hand to hand like it is the most interesting plaything he has ever found. It is really surprising how he can change his mood from Mr. Cool to Mr. Don't Care in a split second. He truly has an ambiguous personality. But my Luke. He is sweet as always. He was smiling and he was over the moon, his happiness was clearly visible in his shining eyes. We are going to win this, he said highly motivated. Isn't it, he asked, and the question was directed me. I panicked. It is not that I have talked with him much, so I found it a bit awkward. You know, directly talking to him instead of texts. Yes, we can win I managed to tell. Not we can sweaty, we should, Bob said laughing. True we have all three of you so if we don't win it's such a shame. Glenn added. Really, you feel shame for that Glenn? I thought you have no shame at all Luke said, though he said it as a mere statement, he actually sounded sarcastic. You are right. He has no shame none of those have. Okay everyone so, now you have your teams formed and we are going to have an icebreaker session. 
Some of you may be good friends. But some of you are not. This small session will help you to get to know each other better. Miss Smith announced. Great. That is a marvelous opportunity for me to get to know Luke and Jake more, I don't care about the other three anyway. We are going to give you all an online questionnaire. It is mostly about your personal preferences and your view on certain aspects. Don't worry it is a multiple choice questions paper she said smiling as some of the students started complaining. Then we will give you time to discuss them within your teams. After that, each one of you will be given another online question paper, and one of your teammates name will be written on the top. You have to answer those questions with that person's preferences. For example, if Penny got Mark's name written on her paper she will answer the questions with his likes and dislikes. And Mark will get the paper with Penny's name written on it and he has to answer about her likes and dislikes. This is more like a pair work you don't know who is the person you are getting, but if you get a name that implies that a person has definitely got your name but you can't get help from that person to fill your questions. I think that is obvious she laughed. Oh that's unfair ma'am we should get help from them, Glenn said pouting. You can get support Glenn if you wish to get disqualified. Dr. Federicks said. Okay, guys then, whoever the top five pairs will be selected to the final round. We will inform you about that after we select our top five pairs. Hope you all are clear about the rules. If not raise your hands. Few people needed clarifications and she answered them. They have even created a web app specifically for that, Dean said. Yeah, they have put some serious effort into this, Luke answered. Okay, guys you will get the questionnaire now start to fill your preferences. Miss Smith announced. The questionnaire was a simple one, but I don't know if it is easy to remember this type of information about someone else. Not just one, I have to remember about five others. Because I don't know who I will get in the next round. I hope it will be not Bob or Glenn. After that, we all discussed our answers. Luke read one question and we all told our answers to them, it was quite funny. Sometimes I couldn't stop laughing, because of some stupid answers given by Bob and Glenn. I really, really like this. Sitting just beside Luke, listening to him and getting know him better. How much I didn't know about him. Even Bob and Glenn felt less annoying, they were fun. I have never felt this comfortable in any other group work. However, when the time was up we were all given our separate question papers. Praying God I opened it and looked at the name on the top. Oh. It's him. Chapter 23 Please God let it be Luke or Jake or at least Dean. Please don't let it be one of those fools. Unfortunately, God seems to be deaf to my prayers, life is not giving me what I want always. Maybe I have had enough good things for a single day. I got Bob. No need to participate for the contest now. I can predict the results. He gave me a disgusting playful laugh. I looked at the questionnaire. I could remember the answer for some of them. Other questions I guessed the answers. However, I got six correct. I think I should really proud of my memory. I knew nothing about Bob but I could get six correct answers out of ten. But that has got just no correct answers, can you even believe that? He got even some obvious things wrong. He is surely an IT. However, the most amazing thing was what happened to Luke and Jake. They have got each other's names and guess what they have got everything correct. Pretty impressive huh? Both of them indeed have a good memory, still getting 10 out of 10 is impossible if you don't really know the other person. How are we supposed to remember about a complete stranger? Jake and Luke got their place secured in the top five teams. I was so happy because as a team we are still in the game. Miss Smith started to give an introduction to the second round. 
So guys and girls, next round is different. You don't get to answer questions about each other, instead, it would be about one of your teammates. Another special thing is this time the questions can be appeared from outside, that means you will get some questions about this person which were not included in the initial questionnaire that's unfair ma'am how we supposed to know them, someone complained. You are supposed to know them. You all have been together for a year now, studying in the same faculty. You should know about your batchmates more, universities are not just for education, that is the place you build up positive relationships as well she responded. Ma'am how you know the correct answers to these additional questions if that person hasn't answered them initially Luke questioned. Yeah, the same question pooped up in my mind. Good question Luke. That person also gets to answer those, the question will be displayed on the screen, both of you have to put the answer you guess after he or she submitted his or her answer from their phones. Great. This is going to be interesting. So after that, the game began. Our team was the last team to compete. All the other four teams performed quite well. One team actually ended up getting nine correct answers. God. That means we have to get all the questions correct to win. Which is almost impossible. Luke and Jake managed to score perfect ten because they are friends since high school as far as I know so they might know each other well. But there is a very less probability for them to know much about anyone else in our team. I so badly want our team to win. This is the very first time I got to team up with them, I don't want it to be a failure. Finally, it was our turn. Luke and Jake went to the front and sat on their dedicated seats. We were sitting behind them. So they couldn't see any of us. No chance to even give them a hint after all. So guys the teammate you are going to get is, Sarah Anderson. Miss Smith announced. What? Oh. Wow. I was astonished. Luke turned back and looked at me with a age.huge smile on his handsome face. His smile told me everything I wanted to know. I know everything about you princess. You would be surprised how I know that much about you. I recalled his voice. When I say I doubt how much they know about anyone else in our team, I had myself completely out of the equation. But after all, he knows about me, even more than I know about myself. I am going to observe how much you really know about me, darling. Show me how much you know about me. So Sarah. Go to the application and get ready to answer, Ms. Smith announced. Then the game began. First six questions were not that tough, they were on the initial questionnaire. They managed to answer them correctly. What is Sarah's favorite drink? Hot chocolate. What else, and I had no doubt they will give the correct answer. Yet. Yeah. I was correct, they answered without hesitation. When is Sarah's birthday? September 14th oh. Does he remember that? Yeah, he remembers. What is Sarah's favorite song? Thousand Years. It is the song which is so connected to my soul. Thanks to Bob's need for taking revenge from me, everyone heard me sing that song. I guessed it made them directly go for the correct answer. So we are 9 out of 10 now. One more to go, please God let it be an easy one. My heart was racing so fast. Sarah is getting ready for one of her assignment, but she finds out that one of her friends has stolen her ideas and he is going to write about them in his assignment. What she will do now? 1. She will go to the lecturer and make an official complaint too. Without taking any actions, she will work hard to find different ideas to write her essay 3. She will go to her friend and talk to him about his actions if it requires she will threaten him of complaining about him once the question displayed on the screen everyone started to shout it is so easy. Yeah, they are right. 
This kind of circumstances has happened to me several times. They came to me and made me reveal my ideas and used them in their work. I didn't go against them or make any complaints. As the typical timid Sarah, I just worked my heart out to come up with new ideas. But now everything is changed. I am not that frightened Sarah anymore. This question asks what I will do? I will definitely go against that person because that is what my Luke wants me to do. I submitted answer 3 let's see how much he has understood me and how much he trusts me. They also gave the answer 3. You got it wrong. How you don't know the answer I heard Bob cursed. I know it is the reaction everyone had. So when the answer displayed is correct, everyone got super shocked. Anyway, I don't care about any of them. What they think, doesn't matter to me. He knows about me, and he trusts me to follow his request, that's all I need. So we won 10 out of 10. We are ahead of all the other teams now. Jake and Luke high-fived. Luke turned to me and gave a thumbs up. God. I can't remember any other day, I stayed this happy. Everything seems to work out pretty well for me. After that we had two guest lectures by some industry experts. Bob and Glenn were complaining all the time. They never come to a lecture, but here they were forced to sit and listen. It was like T0RTURE for them. When their whining gets unbearable Luke had to scold them and make them silent. Anyway, I was in such a good mood, I didn't get bothered from any of the stupid things these two idiots did. After those sessions, we got the instructions on our group project. Mr. Frederick gave us the requirements. According to what he informed us starting from tomorrow morning we will have to work on those requirements and come up with technology architecture and a wireframe design for our solutions. It will go on like a hackathon, so most probably we won't be able to get any sleep tomorrow night. After that, today's program was ended and we had to go for dinner. Jake suggested that we should get together after dinner to get a small heads up for tomorrow. So we all agreed to go for dinner and then go to our rooms, change clothes and make ourselves refreshed and then gather again. Bob and Glenn started complaining about that and they were cut out by Luke. So after dinner, I walked to our room, to get a quick wash. I was shocked by the sound that was coming from the room when I was about to open the door. Without opening the door, I listened to the sound for a few seconds. Those few seconds were more than enough for me to understand what is going on inside the room. Penny should be having. With her boyfriend. Oh. God. What is wrong with them? Why they can't just wait till we go back? Anyway. This unpredicted incident implied that I had no way to get a quick wash. So I just walked towards the lecture hall, where we all agreed to get together. I was planning to wait for others there. But when I arrived there there were some other students, I think they all planned to get a heads up before tomorrow's hackathon. Then I saw Jake was resting on his chair while playing with his phone. He was also in the same clothes. Did he have a problem just like mine? There is no way he didn't hear I entered the hall, but he didn't even raise his head from his phone. What is that important on his phone, I thought while sulking. He walked to him sat on my chair, still he didn't even look at me. He is so rude. I wanted to ask him something because this silent felt really awkward. But I was afraid to even open my mouth. He appears like he is trying to solve all the problems in the world with his phone. I don't understand this person. One time he touches my shoulder and praises me with his rare smile, and the next time he acts like I don't even exist in this world. It is totally a waste of time, waiting for him to speak. So I also grabbed my phone from pocket and started sending Luke a message. Oh God! I wish he was here. Then he will at least talk about something. So how was the day so far? I sent. 
What can I say, so far it's the best. I got an immediate reply. I feel you darling. And it is same for me. So what you are up to the rest of the day? I just wanted to know his answer. My teammates want to discuss the project, so what about you? Same, same, my teammates also want to discuss the project. After all, everyone has taken this so serious. What about you? Don't you take this seriously? Of course I am taking this seriously, but you know I am always like this. These guys are not like that. Ha <laughs> ha. I think this whole setup makes everyone competitive. Yeah I guess so we were just chatting, and he was replying me without any delays. Anyway, I was getting angry minute by minute. If he is free to chat with me, then why can't he just show himself here? Now it's five minutes late from our agreed time. I was fed up with waiting there quietly. Jake was still playing with his phone. Oh. I couldn't take it further. Why no one is showing up, it's late now I asked from Jake. You know, it required a lot of courage to ask that simple question from him. It is just for five minutes they have to take a wash and all he replied without taking his eyes off. What's wrong with you man? It does not cost you anything to look at the person when you are talking with her. Yeah but... We are getting late to go to sleep tomorrow we have a big day I tried to reason with him. That is normal when you work in teams. Not everyone is punctual he said still looking at his phone. You arrogant jerk. Oh my god. Luke. Come here soon, your arrogant friend is giving me a headache. What is he actually doing with his phone? What he finds that interesting. Is he playing a game? I couldn't resist the strong urge to look at his phone. I rose up and pretended like I was walking towards the water filter. So I can just go from his behind and take a look at what he is doing. I forgot to breathe as I saw his screen. I was frozen. What am I seeing now? Oh. God. This is a dream. This can never happen. Never. I wish it was Jake's name she got in the little game as you all predicted, but it was not him. Anyway, I believe it turns out to be something good at the end. Now, what is Jake really doing with his phone? Chapter 24, I was astonished. I think I even forgot to breathe. Oh. God. Was he really, was he really doing that? No way. He was so interestingly looking at a photo of mine. It was weird for him, to look that interestingly at my photo, and it is weirder for him to zoom in and you know, run his fingers all over my face, well, not my real face, but my face on the screen. I don't know whether he sensed I am right behind him, however, he zoomed out the photo and his finger touched the back button. That directs to an even more confusing circumstance. His screen displayed a full gallery of a girl's photos and that girl was none other than me. He suddenly rose up putting his phone away and turned around to look at me. I got panicked, like a little girl who got caught red-handed, while doing a sin. I felt guilty. What are you doing? He snarled. Did he look angry? Well, I am not sure. I couldn't decipher the feeling on his face. I. I am, go, water, filter, avoiding his gaze, I ran to the water filter. Is he looking at me? Will he follow me here? I had a thousand and one questions to get answers. But I was not dared to even look back. It is totally wrong to look at someone else's phone when they are working with it. But what if that someone has so many photos of you on his phone? I couldn't name even a single reason for him to have my photos on his phone. It is completely fine if he has one photo, but we are talking about a gallery full of photos. And not just that he was zoom it and, touching it. Oh God! What is wrong with him? 
I never expected to observe this kind of a thing from him. He is always this cold, proud person who doesn't give a st about any girl. Then what is he doing with my photos? Is he having some kind of a feeling towards me? No. No way. That would be the last thing to happen in the world. Someone like him, someone who is everyone's prince charming, to have any feelings for a normal girl like me. Wake up from your dream, girl, those things happen in movies only. But Luke loves me right? He is also, someone I can never believe to love a girl like me. Yet. Yeah. You idiot, he loves you, so get your st together and forget what you saw. Get over Jake girl. I am fed up with your immature behavior. Focus on the person who loves you. This must be a mistake. Yeah, maybe I didn't see it correctly, maybe that is someone else who was in those photos. Sarah. I was pulled back to reality as someone shouted at me. It was from Luke. Then only I realize, that I have opened the water filter, and my cup is already filled and water was spilling out. How dumb are you actually? Are you okay? He asked concernedly. Yet, yeah, yet. Yeah. I was just, I didn't know what to tell. Thinking, he completed my sentence and grinned. Yet, yeah, thinking. I smiled. Must be something special, but you look bit panicked, he said concernedly again. Ah, it's nothing, I said smiling at him and trying to persuade him. Then okay. I got a bit late. Didn't you take a wash? No. I thought it is better to get a wash before going to sleep. I am already sleepy. Let's finish this soon and go to sleep without saying anything I smiled at him and nodded my head in agreement. When we come to the table all the people were already there. Jake was explaining something. I didn't even dare to look at him. But what is the fault I have done, to feel this much embarrassed? I think he must be feeling guilty way more than me, but instead, he looks so calm and cold. Jake kept on explaining things and both Luke and Dean supported him. I couldn't really concentrate on the discussion as my mind was still wandering around those photos. What would be the reason, for him to have all my photos on his phone? Sarah, with Dean's shouting I got panicked and looked at them. I saw Jake was staring at me, with so much anger in his eyes. His whole face has turned red. Luke was looking at me concernedly. Both Bob and Glenn was laughing at me. God! What has happened? Sarah are you sure you okay? Luke asked. He sounded so bothered. How many times we called you, what are you thinking that much? Glenn asked angrily. This is not a place to think about personal matters. If someone can't understand that five other people are just wasting their precious time here when that person is so engaged in thinking and pay no attention to the discussion, I don't see a point to have this discussion anymore. I go to sleep. Jake basically yelled at us, but his gaze was focused on me. He looked furious and disappointed. Then the next moment, he stood up and stormed off the lecture hall without even looking back it took me a few seconds to process what has just happened. Oh. Sarah. You have messed up everything. My eyes filled with tears. I am so stupid, I don't deserve to be happy. I destroy everything. I wanted to go after Jake and ask for forgiveness. But more than that. I wanted to run away from everyone and get hide in my cold small room in my home, that is the place I deserve after all. Sarah, if you feeling unwell, please tell me. Luke sounded really sad, there was not even a hint of anger or disappointment. My Luke. My sweet, sweet. Luke. You don't deserve to be loved by such a gentle person Sarah. You have your feelings all over the place. Why you can't hold to one decision. I am fine Luke, 
I am really sorry, please forgive me. I was in a small problem. But I know I should not make you all waste your time, because of that. Hey, don't think that much. It is a small thing, that can happen to anyone at any time. Luke tried to convince me. How much you love me, my sweet Luke. I really don't deserve your love. Yeah don't worry Sarah. It is not a big thing. I actually don't know, why Jake got that mad Dean said. I also really don't get that Dean. When I was complaining about guys getting late, he said we have to expect such things when we do teamwork. But now he got this angry because I didn't pay attention? What you mean? Jake was correct. We all are wasting our time here, looking at all these. Bob yelled at me. Bob. Luke yelled at him and gave him a warning look. Why you bark at me, you didn't try to stop Jake. He can tell whatever he wants. But I can't even open my mouth, Bob yelled again. Please stop, please, you don't have to fight. This is all my fault. Please forgive me. We were discussing the architecture right? I promise you, I will come up with the architecture diagram by tomorrow morning. So your time will not be wasted. I said. I couldn't let them bark at each other just because of me. Especially I didn't want to put Luke in trouble. That is not an easy thing. You may have to wake up all night Sarah. Dean stated. That is totally fine. I will take care of that. You all may go to sleep now. I said trying to smile. Let's go buddy Glenn stood up with Bob, then both of them went out without saying anything else. You don't have to do that, Sarah, Luke said. That is okay Luke. Please you two go and sleep I can't just leave you here and go to sleep, Luke said frowning. It's okay Luke, it is really fine Dean you go to sleep. I will stay here with Sarah for some time. Luke said. If you want I also can stay Dean suggested. I didn't know Dean is such a nice person. It seems that there are so much you don't know Sarah. No you go to sleep. Tomorrow we have a big day. So take some rest Luke replied. Okay then. I am going. Don't try to finish everything, we can do that tomorrow. Dean said. We both nodded our heads in agreement. Then he left us. There were not many students in the hall at that time. It felt like I am all alone with Luke. Luke. You don't have to, before I complete my sentence, he kept his hand on mine and smiled in assurance. He holds my hand for a few seconds. His touch felt really comforting and it actually made me bit calm down. Let's start work right. He said while opening his laptop. I smiled and opened my laptop too. We were working, and both of us were really focused on our work. We discussed things and started preparing the diagram. Suddenly, Luke's phone rang. He answered it. Hello I tried to not listen to his conversation. But it was so hard as he was talking from right beside me. No. Sarah is preparing the architecture diagram I am helping her. Who was talking with him? Was it Jake? You shouldn't have done that how I know. I understand if you want then okay just by hearing, what Luke was replying, it was hard to understand what they were talking about. Okay I will buy after finishing his call, he just stared at his phone, for some time and then looked at me. Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay it was Jake. So I guessed it right. Hmm, he must be really angry. If you can go to him and apologize, will it make you happy, he asked out of nowhere. I got confused. Do I really want to go to him now? After all, he is the one who keeps my photos on his phone. All the problems are just because of that. 
he didn't even feel any guilt for that, there is no way he didn't notice that I have seen what he was doing with his phone. He is such a cold monster. I don't know, I said, thinking. Well. I think it is better we go and talk to him, you know we have to work together two days more. So we all must be in good terms. Yeah, that's true. No matter what happened earlier, I had to concentrate on our project. I was actually wasting others' time. Okay then, I replied. Let's take our laptops too. I and Jake are in the same room. We can work there and complete this with him. Oh, going to their room. Is that a good idea? I don't really know I can be comfortable with working with Jake right now. Chapter 25, We Both Walked Towards Their Room I still didn't know if this is a good idea. Anyway, I felt I should not make any more difficulties for Luke. If three of us work together, we will be able to get this done pretty fast. So at least he can go to sleep afterward. I hope Jake is bit calmed down by now. Else I don't think I will be able to work with him. Luke knocked on the door. Door is opened I heard Jake's deep voice from inside. Luke opened the door and entered the room, then he holds the door for me to enter. I hesitate for a moment, am I really going to their room? Oh God! I never imagined facing this type of a circumstance even in my wildest dreams. Come in, Luke said with a weary smile on his face. Oh. He looks overwhelmed. My poor baby. Let's finish this soon, and get yourself to sleep, darling. You have done enough for today. Jake was sitting on his bed with his laptop on his lap. So Jake and Sarah. I wish both of you can just forget what has happened earlier and you know to get ready to work together. Luke said looking at both me and Jake. Jake was staring at me, with an unreadable expression on his face. Oh God! No matter how much I tried whenever I see him, those photos just come to my mind. Please, God! Let me forget all of these and go on with the current situation. I am sorry, Jake, I said, looking down. His gaze was like fire. My poor eyes couldn't bear it any more. He gr 0 aned softly. I know, I didn't pay attention and everyone's time got wasted because of me. I promise you it will never happen a few days back I hadn't even talked with Jake, I am pretty sure he didn't even know, there is a girl named Sarah. But how much everything has changed within these few days. Even though. Most of the occasions I got to talk with him were super awkward, humiliating moments. Not just with Jake, my whole life seems to be changed. This all started with Luke began to text with me. He is my beloved guardian angel. I get to experience things, that I never expected to experience, because of him. Will you please tell something, Jake? Luke asked finally since Jake didn't give any response to my apology. He was just staring at my direction. Let's start work, Jake said, taking his eyes off me and looking at his laptop. Such a rude jerk. Why can't you just say something after even I come to your feet and beg for forgiveness? You think that high of you. That all of us are just your subjects, nothing more. You have the privilege to do and tell anything you wish. Luke looked at me helplessly. I couldn't bear the exhaustion and helplessness in his handsome face. You don't deserve to see all these dramas, my love. I hate Jake not because he doesn't even give a sh t about my feelings, but because he makes you miserable. I hate myself even more because I was blindly obsessed with such a cold arrogant. Thank you, Jake, thank you for showing your true colors. It helps me to get over you easily. I faked a smile, just to cheer up Luke. Okay then let's do this Luke smiled at me and said. 
Then taking his laptop he went and sat on Jake's bed. I couldn't realize what I should do now. Is it okay for me to sit on his bed? Will he just scream at me for that? I was holding my laptop and looking at them confusedly. Hey, come sit here Luke said pointing to space next to him. Jake raised his head from his laptop and looked at me, I was waiting for him to tell something. But he didn't. So I assumed he was fine with me sitting on his bed. I sat there, and we all started working. Luke showed Jake the work we have done so far. Then Jake pointed out some parts we have overlooked. After that, all three of us actively engaged in the discussion and preparing the architecture diagram. I must tell no matter my resentment towards Jake, I really enjoyed working with them. They both were highly knowledgeable and they have a good out-of-the-box thinking. We could finish it within like an hour. I am going then, I said closing my laptop and standing up. Well, I will take you to your room, Luke said standing up. No, no need Luke I can go I protested. I know you can go. But I insist I am coming with you he smiled. Let's go I am coming too unexpectedly, Jake rose up from his bed. I think even my mouth fell open. What's with his kind gesture all of the sudden? But Luke's face was lit up with a huge smile like he had a great victory. However, all three of us started working towards my room. I was praying God, that Penny's small session with her boyfriend has finished now, or else I will have to stay in the corridor all night. Good night. Take a good rest after we arrived near my room, Luke told. Good night Luke. You two take a good rest and thank you for accompanying me I said to Luke and looked at Jake, who was looking above my head aimlessly. Good night Jake thank you I whispered, in a voice that even I didn't hear clearly. Good night Sarah when Jake said, I was really surprised. I really, really can't understand this human being. I took a wash and rested on my bed. No need to tell I was exhausted, yet I couldn't sleep. I was analyzing everything happened today, or to be precise yesterday as it is past midnight now. Yesterday was such a long and surprising day. So many good things happened, and a few bad things too. Overall, it is a wonderful day, isn't it? I was thinking about what other girls would tell if they know I got the opportunity to go to Luke's and Jake's room and sat on Jake's bed. Then work with both of them and they took me to room two. They will die with jealousy, no doubt there. After all, Jake and Luke are the two of most attractive guys in our batch. Most especially both of them are quite untouchable and unreachable, so getting this kind of a chance to spend time so closely with them, yeah, it is definitely a dream come true for any girl. I think I have fallen asleep while I was thinking, I woke up with the sound of my alarm. It was six in the morning. We have to be there around 8. Penny was still sleeping. So I went to the bathroom and got ready for the day. After that, I spend a few minutes checking the work we have done yesterday. I heard my phone vibrated. Good morning princess. Looking forward to seeing you, I smiled happily at his message. Yesterday, he proved me how much he actually cares about me, not even for a second he let me stay alone or sad. He always came for my rescue. My sweet baby. Good morning, hope you got a good sleep well, not that much. W-H-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y. I was having some thoughts. Anyway, my head is a bit clear now oh, poor Luke. He must be really depressed because of me. He had to do a lot for me and he couldn't even sleep properly because of me. Oh. I hope you are okay now yes, princess. I am good now. See you soon, got to go to the bathroom d I giggled at his message. I was thinking about what would it be to stay with Jake. Is he acting all harshly and make my baby sad? No. I don't think so, after all, 
they might be really good friends. I hope Jake treats my poor baby with due respect and love. I was walking towards the hall when someone grabbed me from my elbow to a side. What? Shut up BH it was my darling twin brother. He placed his palm over my mouth and shut me. After I was calm he removed his hand and gave me a deadly stare. What you think of UHA? I was shocked by his unexpected question. What? Do you think you are the Wonder Woman after just sang a song and got complimented by everyone? His tone actually made me laugh, though I knew, it will make us even angrier. You guys made me sing, otherwise I had no intention to do that. Yeah, I know. Bob should be responsible for all your attitudes now. But remember well, little sister you can never win against me. You are just there to get humiliated and nothing else. You are my toy. I can do anything to you as I please. You better remember your place he squeezed my chin and growled. I know I shouldn't stand all these harassments, I should not let them make me feel like sh, t again, but when it comes to Shane, I felt I have no courage to go against him. I don't know maybe, deep down my heart I actually love him. He is my brother, my own blood. No matter how evil he treats me, maybe that's why I can't do anything against him. Why you went to their room, he asked out of nowhere. God. How he knows that? I asked a question answer. What? Don't pretend like you don't know anything. What you did in Luke and Jake's room that late. Gave them some pleasure down there. He laughed like a freak. Tears filled in my eyes. How my own blood can think that low of me. Oh. I forgot they don't allow you for them. So maybe you cleaned their toilet. Why don't you just kill me, brother? Why you hate me this much? Shane, it hurts, please, I cried as he pressured his touch on my chin. So what? I want you to get hurt. You don't deserve happiness. Because of you, I lost my happiness, and you have to repay for that in your entire life. He even pressured his touch and his other hand was holding both of my arms together. Shane please, please. Listen, don't you dare to get close to my friends. If you become closer to them. I will make your life a living hell he finally said pulling himself away from me. My life is already a living hell. I was just trying to get out of it brother, but it seems you will never let me go out. Chapter 26 After he left me, let me deal with my tears and heartaches, I waited there for a few minutes. I couldn't realize what is the mistake I have done to steal his happiness. He always says he lost his happiness because of me, but what on earth I have done? I have done so much to make it up to him, for some mistake that I don't even know, but I only received his harsh words and beats. How much I craved to get a single word with love from him. I knew, if I stayed there any longer, I would miss my breakfast. So I went to the common washroom nearby and washed my face to rinse away all the tears and pains. Perks of not wearing any makeups. I don't have to worry about my mascara getting ruined or my foundation getting wear off. I took breakfast in a hurry since I didn't want to be late for the session and make Jake angry again. When I arrived at the hall, Jake and Luke were already there. They were discussing something. Good morning. Luke said as he saw me. No need to tell, his face lit up with a bright smile. Good morning Jake also said without taking his eyes off the laptop. That's fine, he seems a bit cool down after yesterday night. That's progress. Hope he will remain like this for the whole day. Good morning both of you. I greeted them and sat with them. After a few minutes, the session started. Since we had prepared the architecture diagram yesterday, we had a strong foundation to start our work. We divided work among us and started working on our parts. 
Jake was appointed as our team lead, and he is one hell of a leader, I must say. He really knew, how to get work done from others, no wonder he is the best football captain our university has produced so far. Even Glenn and Bob collaborate with him quite well. It was amazing to work with these guys. Even Glenn and Bob were less annoying. We were working in a very good phase. When it comes to dinner time, we have completed all the major parts. But we had few improvements to be done and some other small parts to be completed. Therefore, we decided to meet again after dinner like yesterday. After dinner, I went to the hall and looked at who has come already, because I didn't want to stay alone with Jake again. Yesterday it leads him to scold me and storm off, don't know today what it will lead to? Dean was there working on his laptop, and no one else was there, so all good. With a confident spirit, I walked toward our table and sat there. After a few minutes, the rest of them also came and we all started working again. We were so focused on our work and didn't actually feel time passing. I am tired. Bob said yawning. Me too Glenn replied looking at Jake. I guess they both were feeling drowsy for a long time but were afraid to mention it to Jake. We have a few more things to complete before going to sleep, Dean said. How about we grab something to drink like coffee? Luke suggested. That's a great idea, it will help us refresh and stay a few hours more Jake seconded that suggestion. I can make you guys some coffee I volunteered, anyway I was also feeling super exhausted and I thought to take a little break from work and engage with something else is good. Thank God, I thought we are gonna get coffee from that stupid coffee machine, I hate that coffee, Bob responded. Agreed, that's not coffee that's sh, t, Glenn said. I don't know if both of them are gay or not if they are then they would make a perfect couple. There is literally nothing that Bob suggests and Glenn disagrees. I can help you Luke offered. Oh. Darling, thank you. Good then let's go and make us some coffee, I said standing. I was making coffee and Luke was standing next to me. It felt a bit awkward to stay all alone with him in a small room. But in the meantime I loved it. God. I am so sleepy he said yawning. You couldn't sleep properly yesterday as well, I said worrying about him. That's nothing. I can stay awake for days. I am feeling sleepy because we are doing some academic stuff. If we are doing something else, then I will not feel sleepy at all he said giggling. Ha, ha. I bet you all would get some time to do something other than academic if Jake was not there. I said, recalling how Jake gave others deadly stares whenever they tried to get off the tracks. Definitely, he said laughing. Nevertheless, if he was not there, I don't think we will be able to get anywhere with this project you don't know how hard it is to work with those two idiots he added. You all are so afraid of him no. I said grinning. We just respect him, ma'am. He is our captain. We treat our beloved captain as a king. I couldn't control my laugh with the way he said that. He also joined with my laugh and we both laughed our hearts out. What you two are doing, with that voice both of us got shocked. I almost spilled hot water. Shane was standing near the door looking at us with a stare that could burn two of us alive. Making coffee. Luke said, his voice sounded a bit irritating. Coffee. Shane said sarcastically. I thought you two are having a party here, screaming and laughing he added. He walked towards us and stood behind me. Can I get some coffee too, he asked. She has made coffee for just our team Shane. Luke responded. That's okay, Shane. Let me make you a coffee too I offered because he was already annoyed. I can tell it by just looking at him, so why should I make him even angrier? Good girl, he said looking at Luke. 
Luke didn't say anything, he looked away with a disgusting look on his face. Shane is such a pain in the... I was having a wonderful time with my Luke and he had to come here and ruin everything. What's his deal anyway? Why he cares so much about I become friend with his buddies? Maybe he is scared I will tell them that we are siblings? Well, I don't want to tell that to anyone. How I can tell it to anyone in the first place, without embarrassing myself? Anyone would ask, then why he loathe me this much, a question that I don't know the answer for. How is project work? Shane asked. I looked at him, to check if he asked that from me. But as I expected he was directing that question at Luke. So I just didn't tell anything. I asked how his project work, he repeated his question as Luke didn't reply. You asked me? Luke asked. Yes, can't you even understand that? You were right behind Sarah, so how I know? You know that I don't want to talk with this filthy slut Shane. Show some respect she is not a slut Luke yelled, he seemed so much angry. I have never seen he got this angry with anyone. Why, your heart got ached, when we scold her. Why? Are you in love with her? Shane's words made me froze. What is he asking? Luke's face turned to red like a ripe tomato. Don't be ridiculous Shane. To ask you to stop disrespecting a woman, do I have to love her? You didn't care what we do to her all this time. I want to know why are you acting like her knight in shining armor all of the sudden. Shane was furious, and Luke was no different. God. Where this argument leads to now. What should I do now? But Luke was much more intelligent and patient than Shane. Without uttering a word, Luke looked away. Maybe he was afraid that he will spill out our little secret. He is loving me. So how he can answer Shane's question covering all his feelings? Answer me, Luke. Shane screamed and grabbed Luke from his t-shirt as Luke didn't reply. Luke. My sweet Luke. Shane, please, what are you doing? I begged him without knowing what to do. What is going on here, with that deep voice, Shane lose his grip and pulled himself away from Luke. The person who entered the room was Jake. Thank God. The right person at the right time. What's going on Shane? Jake asked walking towards us. He sounded calm and collected, but his face showed otherwise. Nothing, Shane said looking away. Luke. Jake then asked. Everything is okay, Jake Luke replied. Then what you two are still doing here? Sarah if you have finished making coffee, let's go. We have a lot of work to finish, we don't have time to fooling around. I offered a cup of coffee to Shane, and Luke took the jug filled with coffee. Let's go, Jake said, looking at Shane with disgust. We three came out of the room when I looked behind Shane was staring at us and with the look of his face, I knew both Luke and Jake have made a real enemy just because of me. Chapter 27, Three of us walked to the main hall in absolute silence. I looked at Jake and Luke time to time, both of them looked so connected in their own thoughts, and it was not hard to tell both of them were in so much anger. After we come to the hall, I served coffee to everyone and we started work again. Even though other three people have no idea what has happened inside that room, they seem to realize that both Jake and Luke are not in a mood to tolerate any talk other than project-related. We talked with each other just to discuss things related to the project only. As a result of our hard work and commitment, we could cover all the aspects related to the project and we even could finalize the content for all the PowerPoint slides related to tomorrow's presentation. We decided that it is better if Jake, Luke and I deliver the presentation tomorrow. Since we only get 10 minutes, there won't be enough time for all six of us to do the presentation anyway. Therefore, 
the other three took the responsibility of modifying the slides and make them eye-catching. After dividing the presentation into three parts and assign each part to Jake, Luke, and me, we decided to go to sleep. Almost all the other teams were still working on their project, and they were just firefighting as they have very limited time left. Seems like they have to stay up all the night, Dean said looking around. If we didn't focus, we would also be in the same boat, Jake said. Everyone nodded in agreement. Luke offered to take me to room as yesterday, there was no anger or any negative emotions left on his handsome face. He was back to his joyful self. But when it comes to Jake, he seemed fine from outside, but his eyes were telling another story. They were still red and clear anger is visible on them. Jake, didn't even tell he come with us to my room, instead, he just followed us. Good night to both of you. Thank you for taking me here. I said looking at both of them after we reach my room. Good night Sarah, Luke said with a gentle smile. Jake just looked at me and then looked away. I sighed. After taking a wash I came to my bed. Penny was still not there. They might be working still. I took my phone to send him a message. Sleep well, sweet dreams, I don't have to dream today. I was looking at you all day, so it is a dream itself. Got his reply right away. He is right. All these feel exactly like a dream. Who thought a girl in the woods will become so valuable for someone like him? You are right. Not just today. You texting with me is a dream for me. And I never want to wake up from this delightful dream. You have to wake up, princess. We have to make this dream a reality. After that, I will never let anyone to even look at you in a wrong way oh. Poor Luke. He is still worried about me. But I didn't know how to reply to him. He may be able to protect me from everyone, but I am not sure how he is going to protect me from my own family. Not even he can go against them. I think I should sleep now, how about you? I asked. Well, I have some work to do. Sleep tight princess, he replied. Work? What work is he talking about? We have finished all the work for today, haven't us? Maybe he is getting ready for his part of the presentation, but we have sufficient time for that. Wait. I got it. He doesn't know that I know who he really is. Therefore, he may try to pretend, like some other guy who's still stuck with the project work. Clever enough, huh? Tomorrow we have to go back, don't we? Even thinking about that made me sad. I have to go again, to that hell which I call home. How much I enjoyed, these two days with all these guys. Even with Bob and Glenn. I never thought I would enjoy working with them. Jake. I didn't feel nervous working with him, instead, I started loving it. He is like an ocean full of knowledge, his contribution to our project was tremendous. He is arrogant and cold. He was even looking at my photo for a reason only the god and he knows. Then he pretended like he didn't do anything. All of these are true. But I don't know why I felt he is a lot more kind and caring from inside. What he has done, in that small room, was definitely a proof for that. He didn't want to see me, or Luke get into trouble. He just saved both of us, didn't he? Yesterday night when I was going to sleep I was in angry with him, but tonight I was really grateful to him. On the other hand, Luke became more and more closed to my heart, with his charming joyful nature. He treated me like he has been friends with since forever. Having little chit-chats with him here and there made me felt over the moon. How nice it would be to talk with him after he reveals himself to me. Please, God, make it happen soon. I am getting utterly desperate. I wonder how it would be to chat with him, 
just as Sarah and Luke just two friends. But how I can get it to happen? I was thinking of holding my phone to my chest. Facebook. Yeah. Facebook. I should activate my FB account and send him a request. He will definitely accept it. There is no doubt. But would he think something else? It is not that I have a thousand friends on FB, I have only a few friends, most of them are complete strangers as well. I anyway didn't find FB is that interesting, so I always keep my account deactivated, I only activate it whenever I need to go and find something on FB, or I have got to submit some assignment in a FB group. Other than that, I used to go and look at Jake's profile from time to time. He is not one of my FB friends, but I just went and look at his profile picture. He rarely updates his profile picture, but I love to look at his photo. No. Luke won't think anything about that. He would be happy. Without thinking again, I just opened the FB app and activated my account. Great. I searched for his name. Luke Bernards. There he is. His profile picture was a one taken after a football match, he was holding a medal and smiling from every single muscle of his face. God. You are so handsome. I sent him a friend request. Did I really send that? Yeah, I did that. Anyway, he always does everything for us. I also have to do something for us right? I stayed a few minutes closing my eyes. Before I fell into a deep sleep, I opened the FB app, with my eyes half closed. He has accepted my request. God. He has accepted it. My drowsiness just vanished to somewhere. I started to scroll through his account. He has uploaded a lot of photos. Most of them were taken during football matches. It was really interesting to look at all his photos and posts. He is indeed really famous in FB, there are thousands of comments and reactions to his photos, especially from girls. Which made me bit sad and a lot jealous. God. I have to sleep. I can't just keep o scrolling. Why you have uploaded this much photos? Next day morning we get together and prepared for the presentation. Other teams were so much exhausted and they were not even in good condition to deliver a presentation. On the other hand, we were refreshed and all ready to go. I don't know about the content of their project, but almost all of their presentations. They were not attractive at all. All the speakers were so tired and they couldn't even properly answer the questions asked by the judging panel. When it is our turn to go, three of us went to the front. I must say Dean, Bob and Glenn had done a marvelous job in the presentation slides and it looked very professional yet eye-catching. When I go and stand in the front, in the middle of the most handsome and most loved two guys in our batch, all the eyes were focused on us. All the girls were dying with envy. Usually, I feel all scared to stand in front of a large crowd because no matter how good I deliver, they find something to make me embarrassed. But today the story is totally different. I felt extremely confident and proud. We nailed the presentation, three of us synced with each other effortlessly and the flow of presentation was perfectly smooth. Incredible. Professor Cooper said as we finished our presentation. All the lectures applauded in agreement. It is literally impossible to hear such a comment from Professor Cooper. Miss Smith even gave us a thumbs up. I was almost in tears with happiness. I didn't care about all the deadly stares I was getting from our batch mates. I knew I have to deal with them after getting back to university. But for now, I am so happy and proud. All six of us started to shake hands with each other and congratulate ourselves. When I offered my hand to Jake, he shook it firmly with that rare smile back on his sculpted face. Oh. God. 
that smile can make any girl fall for him in an eye blink. Next, it was Luke. When I was going to shake his hand, he just hugged me surprisingly. I didn't know what happened or how to react. I was crushed in his strong arms. Then he whispered to my ears. Hello all, so what you all think? Let me know your thoughts. Love you all. Chapter 28 I closed my eyes embracing his warm H.U.G. I had infinite emotions on my mind and most of them were foreign to me. However, the dominating emotion was happiness without any doubts. I was crushing in his strong hands, but I loved the way he held me. We did it. I am so proud of us then he whispered to my ear. I smiled, ignoring all the disappointments in my life. I am not that old Sarah, who doesn't have anyone by her side to protect her and share her life with. Instead, she has a handsome guy who loves her and protects her. Then he freed me. I think he held me in his hands for a few seconds. I don't really know how long. But those few seconds were enough for almost everyone to stare at us. Giving a H.U.G. to your teammate after a triumphant presentation is not an abnormal thing to do. Then why everyone is looking at me like they want to kill? Me right here, right now. Yes, I got it. All these astonishments are just because it was me and Luke. A girl nobody wanted and a boy everyone loves, but couldn't approach. Looking at all the people who were staring at me. I knew I am in trouble. Most especially after I saw raging Shane, who hit the table with his fist with unbearable anger. I was so sure that both of us will have to regret this small age.ug soon. On the other hand, Luke didn't even care, who was looking at us or what they might thinking. He hugged Jake also, and he was in extreme bliss. His handsome face was glowing. After he released Jake from his age.ug, Jake looked at me. He didn't have his rare smile on his face anymore. His face was clouded with some unreadable emotions as usual. The journey back to university was very boring as everyone was extremely tired. Almost everyone was sleeping. No matter how tired I felt right then, my heart was filled with happiness. As a result, I also fell into sleep in no time. I was lying on my bed in my small cold room, thinking about all the wonderful days I spent with him in our final age.ug. He even said bye to me, when I leave university. My sweet Luke. Suddenly my door was opened and I panicky sat on the bed. I usually don't lock my door, as no one come to my room. I was entirely surprised to see Shane walking towards me. Shane, I said with a broken voice. Why is he here? Is he going to beat me? Without saying anything he sat on my bed, keeping his eyes focused on mine. How you know Luke, he asked. What? Is that even a question? Luke is also in the same batch as me. I asked how do you know him? he again asked. His voice didn't sound like angry. He is in our batch, I said in a voice that even I couldn't hear properly. Don't play with me, Sarah. There are several other girls in the batch, but you are the first girl he gave a age.ug like this in front of everyone. I am asking how you know him that well, so he gave you such a age.ug, he demanded. Believe me, Shane. I don't know him. We just worked together in the workshop. Other than that I have barely spoken with him. I said. I can't tell Shane, he gave me that warm age.ug because he loves me. I can't let anyone knows that Luke is texting with me. No matter how much I hate lying, I had no other option. He stared at me for a few seconds. Then out of nowhere, he grabbed me from my neck and started to make me suffocate. Shane. I screamed, trying to lose his strong grip. He was so much stronger than me. 
I felt like I was going to die. Stay away from my friends, if you love your pathetic life. He yelled at me, burning from anger and then he left me. I fall to my bed coughing and crying. Why brother? Why you treat me like this? I think my payback time has just commenced. I have to pay back for all the happiness I received in the past few days. I cried myself to sleep, as I have done in many nights in my miserable life. From the next day onwards, I tried to avoid Luke and Jake as much as possible. I didn't want to make any troubles to them anyway. But Luke made it. So hard for me to avoid him. Whenever he saw me in a corridor, or in the canteen or anywhere, he started to wave his hand at me and smile. Sometimes he even talked with me. No need to tell I was enjoying his loving gestures, but the meantime, I was scared. If Shane got to know, that Luke is texting with me, God knows how he will react. I had to be cautious not just about Shane, I became a common enemy of most of the girls. Luke never shows any special attention to any girl, no matter how hard they tried to get close to him. Therefore, I think they couldn't comprehend why Luke is being so friendly towards me. They tried to hurt me a few times, but fortunately, I managed to avoid them. Nevertheless, days went on like this, making Luke close to my heart more and more and making others hate me more and more. One day I saw on Facebook that his birthday is on tomorrow. I wanted to give him a gift, but I couldn't understand what should I give him or when should I give him that. If I give him a gift in university, all my problems will get worse. On the other hand, he is a billionaire. What poor I can possibly buy him? I was thinking so hard, what should I do, when my phone blinked with a new message? My sunshine. Heavy black heart I smiled at his message. How are you? Fine. Staying on my bed thinking about you? Heavy black heart really? So what you think about me? What you may be doing now, what you will be doing if you are here with me right now? Oh. So what you think, I will do if I am with you now? Well, in my mind you will do a lot of things if you are with me. Anyway as a summary I can tell you will be in my arms and you will be happy and comfortable. I blushed even to imagine, me in his arms. God! How happy would I be? I know I will be happy, there is no doubt. BTW what's up? MMM, nothing much just lying on the bed. I have a viva with Dr. Frederick, tomorrow. So, what you are up to tomorrow? Well, tomorrow is kind of a big day. I have a party too yes of course darling. Tomorrow is indeed a big day because it is your birthday. So you are going to have a party? Hope I also could come and wish you. A party? I asked just to see what would he tell. Yeah, a birthday party oh, I see. Hope you have a lot of fun well. Parties are not really my cup of tea. But this one is special so can't miss it. Otherwise, I would do everything to skip it, parties really stuck, don't they? Do they? I don't really know. I have not attended many parties to give a comment on this even when typing it, I felt really bad. No one has ever invited me to their parties, except for official parties like prom. After some parties most of them attended, I had to tolerate all the fun stories they will discuss in the next few days. I am so sorry princess, I made you sad, didn't I? Hey don't worry about that. You can do nothing about that. But I am sure, one day I will get to attend all the parties I want with you by my side. Heavy black heart thank you for keeping your faith in me princess, that's all I want. Next day morning, I went to university. I couldn't come up with an idea for a gift yet, so I was still thinking about that. In the washroom, I heard a few girls were talking about attending Luke's birthday party. 
It seems like he has invited a lot of people and he is going to have it in a big hotel. Don't get me wrong, I want all the happiness in this world for my Luke. But I felt a bit sad because I won't get to see him being so happy at his birthday party. I came out of the washroom with a heavy heart. I was walking along the corridor, so hopelessly until I bump into someone with a strong chest. God! That is my darling birthday boy. There were not many students at the corridor, it was pretty much empty. Finally, God has given me a chance to at least wish him properly. Hey, he said with a bright smile. Happy birthday. I said smiling. Give me a h.ug girl, though he said as a request, without letting me saying anything he hugged me. Sweet Jesus. I know, I should be afraid about all the eyes that would be staring at us, but at that moment, I didn't feel anything else other than his affection. Sarah, I have an invitation to be made, he said looking at my eyes after he releases me from the age.ug. Invitation my voice was almost inaudible. I know it is super late. I didn't know if you are willing to come or not. That's why I didn't ask you earlier. But anyway, would you like to come to my birthday party tonight, am I dreaming or did he really tell that? Sarah. I know you must be really annoyed at me, for inviting you at the last moment, he was saying. S.H. I kept my index finger on his lips and make him silent. Are there people looking at us, well? I don't give a S.H. T. I am honored to come for your birthday party, I said, still having my finger right on his soft lips. God, can I kiss those lips? He appeared shocked. Great. I will send you the details in FB, he said, as I removed my finger from his lips. I looked around. There was literally no one in the corridor. We were alone. This is a perfect time. I stood on my toes and placed a small kiss on his right cheek and ran away giggling. I did it. I really did it. I have no idea what he think about it. However, I hope he doesn't need any other birthday gifts from me. Chapter 29, So God For the first time, I k, s s c d a guy. I know, it is just a kiss on his cheeks not a big deal, yet. God. I I just don't know what he thinks about that. Maybe he got a hint, that I know, he is the one who texts with me. Or, he took it as just a friendly movement. Anyway, I know, I shouldn't have done that, but I don't really regret it as well. However, I just sent him a text. Luke invited me to his birthday party the only objective of that text was to see his reaction. Are you coming? He replied shortly. So, what does it imply? I think he believed my little kiss, just as a friendly kiss. Thank God. That's a relief. Yes, I think so, I replied. Great. Princess, looking forward to seeing you there. I had my viva with Dr. Frederick, which went pretty well. I didn't have any lectures after that so, I directly went home. I had so much to do. I was so desperate that he invited everyone but me for his birthday party. I craved so badly to go there and celebrate this wonderful day with the person I love. So, when he invited me, it made me forget about everything else. Without even thinking twice, I accepted it. But now, I have to figure out what am I going to wear? Luke has already sent me the details of the venue via Facebook. It was a great hotel in the town. I don't have any beautiful dresses to wear for such a grand occasion. To be honest, I don't really own any good dresses for any party, in any scale. Holding the only reasonable dress that I own, I was thinking what should I do? I can't really wear this to the party. Everyone will just laugh at me. 
The last thing I want today is to get embarrassed in front of everyone and make him sorry. Today is his birthday, and he deserves to have all the happiness. Maybe, I should just message him saying, I get to attend some urgent work, so I won't be able to make it. But I really want to go there. I never wanted to go for a party this badly, in my entire life. What should I do? This is such a dilemma. I felt absolutely helpless. What is the meaning of my pathetic life? I can't even afford to buy a nice dress to wear to the birthday party of the person I love. Without even knowing, my eyes filled with tears. Holding my aching head from both of my hands, I started to cry my eyes out. Why do I live to be this weak? Why don't I just die? I don't know how long I was crying, hating my very own existence. I paused my crying for a second to check my phone, as I received a new message. Princess, I sent you something. The delivery man is right in front of your door. Can you please go and get it? What? What has he sent me? What have you sent? Jesus, wait for a minute, then you can find out. Now be a good girl, and get it. Don't let that poor man waste his time I ran down and opened the door. A man was standing outside and he handed me a considerably big box. I signed his card and climbed the stairs to my room. I was so eager to open the box, which was neatly wrapped in an expensive wrapping paper. It also had a nice bow in the middle. No matter how anxious I was to open it, I carefully unwrapped the box, because that wrapping paper was too good to ruin. Finally, I opened the box. Inside the box, there was the prettiest dress, I have ever touched in my whole life. It was sky blue and knee length. God, it is so elegant. The box contained not just the dress, but it also had a matching pair of shoes and another small box. I carefully opened it to find a pretty pearl necklace and a matching earring. My phone blinked again. I totally forgot to tell him that I received this. I was so excited. Don't blame me, this is like the first time, I received something like this from anyone. Please, don't tell anything other than you like it. I don't want to hear any more about spending money on you. Let's make today an exception. In my eyes, you are the most beautiful girl in the world. I want everyone to see that beauty today. I want my princess to look exactly like a princess my eyes again filled with familiar, stupid tears. What's wrong with my eyes, they get we dot t for sadness as well as for happiness. He invited me to his birthday party. Not just that, he even figured out, I won't have any decent dress to wear tonight. So he even took care of that. How much does he concern about me? I don't like it. I just love it heavy black heart. Thank God. This is the first time I went shopping for a girl. It was hard than I imagined. For the first time, you have done an incredible job heavy black heart one more thing princess. I really wanted to buy you some cosmetics too, but it was even hard. So, I thought it is better to get some support from a professional. You may get ready by six. I will send Clear to get you. He will take you to the salon, I arranged. What? No. That is not really necessary. You have done enough. Didn't I say, today is an exception? I don't want to hear any more about spending money. Furthermore, remember I am not making you go to the salon because I think you need their help to be beautiful. I always value the natural beauty of a girl. You are so beautiful without any of that stupid makeup. But today I want you to do everything, every other girl would do. Wear a nice dress, nice shoes, nice jewelry and have some makeup. Come to the party and enjoy to your fullest. I am so sorry, you couldn't get this experience earlier. But from today onwards, 
I am going to make you experience everything you want heavy black heart heavy black heart heavy black heart I read every single word of his long message over and over again. How lucky am I to have him in my life? Can someone make a girl feel loved and special more than this? I love you, from all my heart and soul, I love you, to my death and even beyond that, I love you. Heavy black heart heavy black heart heavy black heart I got ready by 5.30 and waited for Clark's arrival. I don't know how he managed to buy a dress that fitted to my body perfectly and how he managed to buy shoes in my exact size. Exactly at 6 p.m., I got a message from him saying Clark is waiting for me. Since it was a weekday, mom and dad were not there, but I had to avoid Shane. Therefore, I have asked him to inform Clear to wait for just a little distant from my house. I didn't want to get into trouble because of Shane, at the last minute. However, I managed to escape from home, without Shane getting notice me. I think he was also busy with getting ready to go. Clear welcomed me with his usual friendly smile and took me to a salon. It was a high-end, sophisticated one. They will surely get a fortune for simple makeup. Why he has to choose this salon? We could go for some normal one. I went inside and introduced myself. A girl called Lena came and welcomed me. She put a simple yet, elegant looking makeup on me. God! Now I can understand why people spend a lot of money on these high end salons. They certainly can do wonders. What's with the hair? Lena's assistant asked. I will just add some argon oil. I was specifically advised not to do anything with the hair. Lena replied giggling. What? I asked in shock. Oh, yes, ma'am. You are indeed a lucky girl to have someone like him. He loves you so much. I got blushed. I know I am so lucky to have him, but hearing it from someone else, felt strange. What he said about hair? I asked. He loves your hair as it is. So, he specifically told me not to do anything with the hair. She laughed. Really? Who loves messy hair on a girl? Even I don't like it. I really hope I could do something with my hair too but what can I do? It is his wish. He is the birthday boy after all. Everything is done. Lena said applying some oil on my hair and make my hair with her fingers. I took a look at myself from the mirror. God! This girl in the mirror is so beautiful. You look gorgeous. He will go crazy, after seeing you Lena's assistant said smiling at me. He is also handsome, isn't he? I can tell it by his voice. Lena said. Haven't you met him? I thought you know him. I said. What? No. Ma'am. He talked with me over the phone and informed what needed to be done. But I can tell, he must be handsome, his voice can't just belong to a normal guy. I smiled. What can I say? He is devilishly handsome. Girls are dying for him. Even I am not sure why he loves me this much. Clerk drove me to the hotel. I walked towards the garden where the party was held. It was the first time, I visited a grand hotel like that. I was totally stunned by its glory. On the other hand, I was so nervous. Everything was so strange to me. Wearing all these beautiful and expensive dresses, shoes, jewelry, and everything. I don't even know how to behave in this kind of social gathering. I wish I could just run to him and hold his hand. So he would just protect me, without letting me acting stupid. The entire garden looked amazing. Decorations were simple but sophisticated. The garden was filled with laughter and great music. Everyone assembled in the center while chatting with each other. I walked near to the center. God! These shoes are killing me. 
I was not used to wearing high heels. So, I felt really uneasy. I didn't know walking with these shoes is this hard. Suddenly, I was going to fall and I hold someone's hand, who was just beside me at that moment. Clink. Then everything seemed suspended with a H.Uj smashing sound. Chapter 30, A Moment of Shock I couldn't even realize what has just happened. I felt dumb and senseless. After I got my senses back, I looked at the owner of the hand I was holding so tightly. God! What I have done! I shockingly stared at those panicked eyes, forgetting to let his hand go. That poor waiter was scared and embarrassed to the death. I realized the mess I have created. I was going to fell down. Therefore, I hold this poor guy's hand, who was just beside me. Anyway, the worst thing was he has got panicked more than me, and it made him drop the pile of glasses he had on his tray. That loud smashing sound was from that. Everyone was just staring at us. I was still holding on to his hand like an IT. What a way to make an entrance to your boyfriend's birthday party. No dress nor makeup in the world can make you not act like an IT. You are such a stupid. Are you okay? Suddenly someone came from the other side and held my free hand. With that familiar voice, I felt a thousand times better. Yeah, I, I am fine I said removing my hand from that poor boy's hand and giving my body weight to Luke's, who was holding my hand with concern in his eyes. I saw Jake was also standing just beside Luke. He was staring at me with an indecipherable emotion on his face. He was wearing a tuxedo. He looked so much handsome to be even real. What is wrong with you Sarah? Is this the time to think about those things? Don't worry, I will let the manager know that it is our fault. Please clean this Luke said to the waiter, who was still in so much fear even to move. Luke had his hand securely wrapped around my waist, and from his other hand, he was still holding my hand. Calm down Sarah. Nothing to worry, he whispered. His voice was so much soothing. I felt a lot better having him by my side, but I was still so embarrassed. I knew my face has turned red despite the makeup. It's time to cut the cake. Let's go, he said. He removed his hand on my waist. But he held my hand tightly and started walking to the center. I tried to take off my hand from him because I have drawn enough attention already. I didn't want to make any more trouble by walking hand in hand with him, though I loved to do that so much. I think he read my thoughts. So he let my hand go. I walked behind him, having my eyes glued to the ground. Jake was following us. After a few minutes, he cut the cake. It was a gigantic cake they have spent a fortune on this party. However, I was surprised to find out that it was just his friends who were there at the party, I thought his family members are also participating. Anyway, that's better. Otherwise, all his family could have witnessed how I made myself a fool. I was looking at Luke with so much love and admiration. He looked so handsome today. Most of the other handsome and beautiful people I know are so rude and mean. But he is a clear exception. He is the kindest person I have ever known. After cutting the cake, I was sitting alone at a table. Everyone was enjoying the party to their fullest. This party has everything one could ask for including delicious food, good music, and ample space. Now the dance floor was also opened. So people were dancing like there is no tomorrow. I felt the vibration of my phone. I should have told you this way earlier. You look stunning princess. Everyone is just looking at you. Believe me, all these girls just want to be like you, and all the guys just want to date you. But you are mine, and no one can be like you. I have no words to tell how much proud I am his text made me smile and filled my heart with some unknown pleasure. 
Thank you. All of these because you helped me. No. You are a diamond. No one has cut that diamond to shine. Hey. Someone said, sitting next to me. It was Kane, one of my batch mates. He is also in the less annoying category, though I haven't talked with him much. Hey. I smiled, taking my eyes off the screen. You look beautiful tonight, he said. Thank you, Kane. You look great too. Sarah, he seemed a bit nervous. Yes, would you mind dance with me, he asked after a pause. Oh. What should I say? How can I dance with someone else at Luke's party? On the other hand, I was texting with him. I am sorry, Kane. I am not a good dancer. I said. Neither am I. But we can try. Even these people don't really dance. They just move their bodies he said laughing. Yeah, but at least they have done that before. I haven't danced before. I tried my best to persuade him. Please Sarah. You got to enjoy when you are at a party. Let's go. Please, he said, looking at me with his puppy dog eyes. Finally, I agreed. I didn't feel like, having him pleading. I danced with him for some time. That was the first time I danced with anyone. I was nervous, what Luke might think. Anyway, I must say that Kane was so gentle with me, and he guided me to follow the steps. I didn't really know, Kane is such a nice person. He made me laugh and felt special. But I was still worried about Luke. So I told him that I am a bit tired. He was such a gentleman, he didn't try to be demanding. We were walking toward the table. One of his friends came and asked him to come to take a photo. So he had to left me alone and go. This shoe. It is actually killing me. God. I got cramp. No. My foot was aching, and I felt I couldn't walk anymore. I was just limping to a chair. All of a sudden, someone grabbed me from the waist and made me sit on the chair. Luke. I looked at his face to check if he is angry. But there was not even a hint of anger. What happened? He asked concernedly. Just a cramp, I said, trying to smile. Oh, he looked worried. I am making troubles to you since the beginning you may think it's a mistake to invite me, I said, looking right into his eyes. I actually felt like a burden to him. What? No. Don't even think like that. Nothing that you do is a trouble for me. Let's remove this first he said, bending down and removing my shoe. No. Wait. I almost screamed. He looked at me with surprise. You don't have to do that, Luke. It will be okay soon. But without listening to me, he just removed my shoes and started massaging my toes. His fingers felt so good on my toes. I am willing to have cramps every day if he looks after me like this. How lucky am I to have you in my life darling. Wait here okay. I will bring something to drink, he said, standing up. I nodded. I think my foot felt a bit okay now. So I stood up to walk for a bit to check it. Yeah, it feels okay now. Thank God. I was walking around the table for a bit. It came again. This is ridiculous. I fell onto a chair, blaming my stupid foot. I bent down and started to massage my toes. I didn't know these cramps could hurt this much. I sometimes get these when I have to stand up for a long time. But they usually get fine soon, but today it hurts so much. Tears filled in my eyes. I saw someone squat near me with my blurred eyes. Jake. Without saying anything, he lifted my leg up and kept it on his thigh. He started massaging it gently. 
What are you doing? I tried to take my leg off. Shut up and wait, will you? He continued. My dress was just knee length. I was nervous if my leg was not properly covered because of the position I am sitting. If it is not properly covered, then he can see just everything if he looks up. What will Luke think? I first danced with one guy, and now another one is massaging my foot. I tried to pull my dress down as much as possible to cover my knees. He looked at what I was doing. God! Such an awkwardness! Can I just dig a pit and bury myself? His jaw muscles clenched. His face gets clouded. Did he look angry? But what have I done to make him angry? He looked down and continued massaging. Ah when he applied a bit more pressure, it hurt like crazy. Didn't you feel this pain when you were clinging to him and dancing like insane, did his voice sound sarcastic or, anger? He looked right into my eyes. What? I asked panicked. The rest of the audiobooks will be uploaded in the next episode, join us on Patreon to listen to more unlimited audiobooks.